Hello again. All right. So the last video I showed you was going from our adorable friend, the puppy shark, into a stick pattern, into a, a tree, what's called a tree diagram or stick figure, as we've known it since we were babies, um, all the way up to uh, plugging it all into Orihime to get a square packing, which is, it, it, it's, it's an inexact art form where you're just trying to it's like shoving stuff into a trunk when you're going on a trip or you know fitting board game pieces into the board game box you put the big pieces in and then you try to fit all the little pieces in around it what we're going to do in this video is i'm going to show you how to use or the orihime software to conveniently uh get a full crease pattern specification and see what your base uh folds into you're not going to get anything exciting out of a box pleated base. It's most of the time going to look like a rectangle. Sometimes you'll get treated to a pentagon, but, you know, one can only hope. So what I'm going to do is we're going to full screen this. Boop. I'm going to move this around. Uh, you use these move buttons at the top. You can click on this, and that'll let you drag your pattern. And then these will let you zoom in and out. So let's do that. We're going to move it around a little bit. Also, you can use these buttons to thicken your lines which we might as well do and then these down here thicken your grid lines okay so I have all these auxiliary folds in there um, I'm gonna go through and remove them because they'll just be a confusing element and I'm right clicking to delete by the way and then I'm going to click this button over here, which is deletes unnecessary vertices, which will remove, which will delete vertices that don't actually go anywhere. All right. So if you have origami design secrets, there's chapter on box bleeding, which will explain all the rules for getting full, like flat foldable box pleats. Um, I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I do. Um, so whenever you see two 45 degree angles meet, you're going to need a third crease. And that third crease is, as, as, as Dr. Lang puts it, the angle bisector of the obtuse angle between the two. Or you can imagine, <laughs> to put it in the way Dr. Johnson would put it, it is, uh, you have, a, you have this, this point here, which you can imagine is like the top of a mountain, and you want to beam the shoot out of the top of the mountain. The beam will be the same parity or direction of fold as the mountain. So I have a mountain fold of I have a mountain of mountain folds here. That's not confusing. And it's gonna ugh, it's gonna shoot out a straight line until it either runs off the edge of the page or encounters another crease. Okay? So here we go. Let's let's blast. No creases, no creases, no creases, no creases, no oh, a crease. And then we stop. Alright? So now, what do we do when we cross this crease? Well, this is a 45 degree angle crease. And so the way that you deal with a 45 degree angle crease is that you hook a 90 degree turn at the, at the uh, when, when you hit the 45 degree, and you hook a 90 degree turn so that you're running across the crease in, uh, along that 45 degree symmetry line. So what I mean is you go, 45 degrees into the crease, like kind of cut a turn into it. You don't do a 45 turn. You don't bounce off. You bounce, you cut through like this. Okay. So I hit this, I'm going to cut through and then go until I hit another crease. So another rule here is that if you hit another mountaintop, you can stop. If you hit it head on, you can stop. There's another rule is that when you do this hook, the the parity of the line that you swap on the inside of the turn, like see how this is kind of like a peace sign, like peace, man. The the one that's inside this 90 degree angle that you make, you change its parity. So we'll do that. Cool. So that has resolved this, this peak that doesn't have a friend. So now we're gonna we have another mountain here of mountain folds. So I'm going to go back to my when oh, I use the change tool, which is the C button to change that, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to hook and I hit this crease and that makes me go a 90 degree angle. And so now this crease has found another mountain to stop at and we're good. 
So now I have to change the parity of the crease that I crossed on the inside of the turn again, which means I can hit C to get my changing tool and change this back. Okay, looking good. All right, so what else do we need to do here? Mountains, 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 mountains. Okay, so now we want to look for all of the vertices that don't have uh, uh, four things coming out of them. And our biggest candidates are going to be these Y shapes. So when we deal with all the, the pointy bits, the pointy 45 degree angles, what we're left is with a lot of Ys. See, there's a Y here in the center, a Y here off to the side. Y over here, and so we want to fix these Ys. The way that we fix the Y is that we shoot another crease out to complete the sort of P sign, but it is going to be the opposite of the parity of the the Y, the, of, of the Y that it's blasting out of. Whoopsie. Undo. So we're going to create a, uh, a, another crease that comes out here and then it's going to reflect over this and then it's going to land in a Y and terminate and then we're going to switch the parity on the inside of the turn back to a mountain fold and now this breaks this one so we're going to switch this ones as well and now we're good okay now we have another Y over here that's going to shoot a blue line out so boop but it runs off the edge of the page. This one shoots one out, boop, runs off the edge of the page. This one shoots one out, hits this, bounces, hits this, bounces, hits this, bounces, comes over here, stops, and now we have to sort this out. So that changes the parity, whoops, changes the parity of this one, which forces this one's parity to, wait, no, wait, no. Which forces the, yeah, the parity of all of these to flip, which then forces the parity of all of these to flip, and now we're good, I think, yes. And then we have another Y over here that's gonna shoot out a valley. No, uh, shoot out a valley. Now, when I cross a line head on like this, this is a 90 degree, I'm hitting it head on, I'm not hitting a 45 degree. You have two options. You can either change the color of the line that you're drawing, or you can change the the color of the line that you're cutting through. So I'm gonna draw through here and cut through and then change the parity of this one. But I don't really wanna do that so, because then this one won't match anymore. So I'm gonna change the parity of this line. And then, uh... wait, I still have to do that though, don't I? I think so, yeah, we'll see. And then I repeat this trick over here. No. Valley, mountain, mountain, change. Now, this was a lot, and I probably screwed it up. There's also places that I know won't flat fold. So what we're going to do now that we've put in all the, but we're going to look around and we're going to say, is there any vertex, any of these little white dots? There's a way to like, See these white dots that are growing larger? Are any of these, you can change them with these buttons in the top left. Are any of these vertices only, only have three creases coming out? Any of the vertices that are in actually in the interior of the paper, the ones on the edge don't count. They can have any number, I think. Yeah, I think they can have any number. So it looks good, looks good. This one has four, this one has two, four, four. They all have to be even numbers, four, four. Four, 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 looks good. So now what I'm gonna do is turn this on. This is gonna show me, it's gonna highlight all of the vertices that are busted and won't flat fold. Okay, so let's go look at them. So we, we didn't mess up. They all actually have four creases coming out of them, but the, the parity or direction of the creases is wrong. Now, we have these Y shapes a way to fix a Y shape is the, the little arms of the Y. You want the bottom of the Y to match that. So that'll, and so the top, the, the Y shape should always have this like different color running through it. So if I go up here, the Y, the, the arms of the Y are blue, so this should be blue. Now over here, we have the arms of the Y are red, so this should be red, and this should be red as well. But now we've, we've, We've pushed the error into the middle. And so what this ends up becoming is like a game of lights out 
It's basically a puzzle that you find in a lot of adventure games where if you flip, if like you turn out a torch, the torches next to it turn on and you have to find a way to get them all to turn on or all to turn off. And that's like a little mini game we have in origami design. How exciting. So now I have to figure out, well, what's going on here? Well, the Y arms are red, so this one should be red, but this one should be blue. So I fix that, but I've just pushed the problem over here. And generally, what ha the reason this happens is because when we were bouncing all of our lines around, we forgot to switch things, or sometimes they interact with each other in weird ways, and we just have to go in and resolve them. So I'm going to change the color of these lines so I can change the color of this, which means it needs to change the color of these lines and this line and this line and now this line. So, But now I've pushed all of these dots elsewhere. And so it becomes a matter of solving this problem uh, by flipping things around and trying to implement these rules. Wait, no. Uh-oh. Ah. Excellent. So now I could try to go through. Well, I'm just going to go through and figure these out. But let me show you how to uh, mirror this across the diagonal of symmetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the select. And I'm, I'm going to rotate my model like this. And thank you to the plant for showing me this, because or for having this in your tutorial, because I wouldn't have figured it out myself, most likely. So go over the select tool, and I'm going to select everything on one side of the symmetry, one side of the line of symmetry. And then there is this little, in this green block of buttons, there's this uh, reflect button, and you click, you're going to click on one end of the line of symmetry, which is up here, and then the other end, and then it'll whoop, It'll just make them, it'll, it'll copy whatever it finds on the one side and, or whatever your selection is and make sure it fits on the other side of that symmetry. If the lines aren't there, it will add them. So I could go like, here's go delete these and repeat the process, hit the select button, select everything, and then hit the reflect button. And then they go, they pop over there. Okay. So now we hope that we're done because now we have to hit the scary button so the bottom button over here is the fold button and what it does is it will fold the shape excellent so it actually worked and it's got this weird like like kink in it okay i think we can work with that we can reverse fold that into position or so on and so forth these buttons at the bottom allow you to move around just like you move around the sheet of paper move around the folded form um this purple circle is the oh uh, how do i put this it's it's when it tries to calculate the fold that's the like face that's the polygon it's, it starts with now when you do this you might get an error what can happen is you can have all flat folding creases you have all flat folding vertices, but when it actually goes to do the calculation, there are other things that can prevent uh, your box bleed from folding flat. For instance, when you have parallel lines like this that are the same parity is bad news bears. You don't want that. So you need to go through and adjust your crease pattern. you got to flip one or the other and then resolve all of the errors, right? So you might get an error at this point. Um, if you do, there's wonderful people on the internet. Or if you Google Origami Dan on Discord, generally those people have been wonderful helping me out and uh, know this a 100,000 times better than I do. Uh, but uh, Or you can ask me. I'm available there as well. If you're finding this video and you're not in my class where I teach origami design. But this is a hopefully good guide. Now you can, what you can do is you can exactly, you can pre-crease an 8 by 8 grid. You can put these creases in and then collapse the model and it should collapse correctly. I have not tried this yet because I designed this live. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any, if you, if I said anything incorrectly, please put a comment in. 
and don't like or subscribe. Don't dislike, please. Don't dislike, but don't like or subscribe. That's that's lame. All right. Bye.